This examination of the image technology as it's explained in the Bible is not affiliated with any religion or doctrine. It's my own work and it's under copyright. A transcript of this presentation will be available at indigoflower.net. In the previous video, we looked at Genesis 1, which says the Elohim made the earth habitable for life and brought forth both male and female humans. And Genesis 2, which tells us next the Yahweh acquired the earth and created hybrids with a certain cell from the humans, and the hybrids married the humans. In this video, we'll look at Genesis 3, which talks about an image technology that the hybrids used to make themselves appear beautiful. And we'll also find confirmation of that in Isaiah 3 and Lamentations 2. And we'll also look at the timing of this event according to the Bible. So Genesis 3 verse 1 in the King James translation says, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden. So the first Hebrew word in this verse was translated as serpent, number 5175, but it also means image. The word translated as subtle is number 6175, which also means crafty, and the definition of crafty is clever in usually a deceptive or dishonest way. And one of the synonyms of the word crafty is devious. So verse 1 says, now the image was more devious. Then the word translated as beast, number 2416, also means sustenance. And the word translated as field, number 7704, means territory or country. But notice it originates from an unused root, meaning to spread out. So it seems possible that the root word was unused, possibly because it was not understood, and it wasn't understood because it referred to space. That's one possibility. So verse 1 can say, Now the image was more devious than any sustenance of space which the Lord God had made. That's a possible meaning, but because the word space is not actually in the Hebrew definition, we'll leave the definition territory here. So this reads, now the image was more devious than any sustenance of the territory which the Lord God had made. And we know the word Lord, number 3068, is the word Yahweh. And notice the word He is not actually in the Hebrew. It doesn't have a number because it's a filler word. So it's not clear yet. In this verse, whether the serpent or the Yahweh are speaking, but we will find out in a minute that the texts are clear that it is the Yahweh speaking here. And Genesis 11 clarifies that Yahweh is not a he, but a they. In verses 6 and 7, it says, And the Yahweh said, Let us go down. So the second part of verse 1 should say, And they said. And then next, we know the word translated as woman, number 802, is the Hebrew word isha, and the texts make it clear that the isha cannot represent humans, but instead means certain one, and in the Genesis 2 context, it refers to the hybrids that Yahweh made to mate with the humans. We also know the word translated as God, number 430, is Elohim, which refers to the creators of the earth, and the word Ye, number 637, also means indeed. So an alternate translation of Genesis 3 verse 1 can say, Now the image was more devious than any sustenance of the territory that the Yahweh God had made. And they said to the Isha, Indeed, the Elohim said you can eat of all the trees of the garden. Then verses 2 and 3 say in the King James translation, And the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. So the lexicon format of this verse is slightly different. We know the word translated as woman, number 802, is Isha. And it's not a human female, but a hybrid that Yahweh made. And the word translated as serpent, number 5175, also means image. 
And the word translated as fruit, number 6529, also means reward. So verse 2 says, And the Isha said, The image is a reward. The trees of the garden we may eat. And then verse 3, the word translated as fruit, number 6529, we know also means reward. And the word translated as tree, number 6086, we know also means shaft. So it says, the reward of the shaft that is in the midst of the enclosure, the Elohim said, and then this word translated as eat, number 398, right here, it's the word akal, and it also means use. Then the word translated as touch, number 5060, also means to be stricken. And the word translated as die, number 4191, also means to perish. So it says the Elohim said, if we, touch, if we use it or are stricken by it, we will perish. So Genesis 3 verses 2 and 3 say, And the Isha said, The image is a reward. The trees of the garden we may eat, but of the reward of the shaft, which is in the midst of the enclosure, the Elohim said, If we use it or are stricken by it, we will perish. So notice Genesis 3 says it was the Elohim who told them not to use the shaft, not Yahweh. So in Genesis 2 it says Yahweh commanded that they do not use the shaft in the midst of the enclosure. But in Genesis 3, it says the Elohim told them they cannot use the shaft. So that would make sense if the Elohim and Yahweh referred to the same group, but the texts indicate they are not the same. So this discrepancy seems to be another confirmation of number 8 here, that Deuteronomy 32 and Jeremiah 8.8 8 warned that the scribes altered the texts and lied, publishing the name Yahweh and giving Yahweh the credit for what the Elohim did. In this case, what chapter 3 says makes more sense, that it was the Elohim who told them not to use the shaft. That would be the creator. So it's also unclear so far whether the serpent is talking to the Isha or if the Yahweh are talking to the Isha, but this is clarified in Revelation 12 and 13. In our examination, of those chapters, we were given some basic facts about the image. First, we were told explicitly that Yahweh is the beast with seven heads and ten horns. Second, that the Yahweh is a group. Third, the dragon gives the power to the beast Yahweh. And fourth, the dragon is the serpent. So this tells us that the serpent is giving power to the Yahweh. And we know the word serpent in the book of Revelation stems from a word that means to appear, and the word for serpent in Genesis 3 literally means image. So we're told the dragon gives power to the beast, the dragon is the serpent, and the serpent is the image. So the texts are telling us the image is giving power to the beast Yahweh. That's a clear relationship explained in the text. And Psalm 104 tells us Yahweh's clothing is light. And Revelation 13 tells us the image was created for Yahweh. And that image is specifically, Revelation 13 says, it is the outward appearance of Yahweh. So the image is the outward appearance of Yahweh that is a clothing of light that the Yahweh wear. So if the image is speaking to the Isha in Genesis 3, then it's the Yahweh speaking. Because it is the Yahweh who used the image as their outward appearance. The texts are clear. The beast is the Yahweh. The dragon is the serpent that gives power to the Yahweh. And the serpent is the image. So the image is giving power to the Yahweh. The clothing of light was created for the Yahweh. It deceives it's the clothing of the sheep that the false prophets or wolves wear. It's the outward appearance of the beast Yahweh. So the serpent in Genesis 3 is the image, which we're told is the outward appearance of the Yahweh. In other words, it's the Yahweh speaking to the Isha here. Revelation is very clear about that. 
And then in verses 4 and 5, the King James translation says, And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die, for God doth know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. So we know the word translated as serpent means image. The word translated as woman is isha, that's the hybrid. And the word translated as God, number 430, is Elohim, that's the creators, and the word translated as eat, number 398, also means use. Then the word translated as eyes, number 5869, also means appearance. The word translated as opened, number 6491, means blossom. The word translated as knowing, number 3045, also means be perceived. The word translated as good, number 2896, also means beautiful. And the word translated as evil, number 7451, also means favored. So verses 4 and 5 can also say, and the image said to the Isha, you shall not surely die, for the Elohim know that in the day you use it, then your appearance shall blossom, and you shall be as the Elohim, and be perceived beautiful and favored. So this tells us a few things. First, it tells us the Elohim are beautiful. So not only are the Elohim generous, benevolent, and human or humanoid, but Genesis 3, 5 tells us they're also beautiful. And the second thing this is telling us is the image is speaking to the Isha. And we know from our examination of Revelation 13 that it was the lamb who speaks like a dragon who caused the image to speak. It's here in number 9. Revelation 13 tells us he made fire, transformation of light, come down from heaven in the appearance of the beast with seven heads and ten horns, who we're told is the Yahweh. Then he caused the image to speak. So we now know that Genesis 3 is telling us the image speaks to the Isha, telling the Isha that the shaft will make the Isha appear beautiful. And here in Revelation 13, we're told the image is light. It's the fire or transformation of light that came down from heaven in the appearance of the human countenance. We have confirmation of that again in Lamentations 2. We'll look at that later. But it's telling us here that the outward appearance of Yahweh is a human appearance. And the lamb who speaks like a dragon caused that outward appearance to speak. Psalm 104 also confirms that Yahweh's clothing is light. The texts are very clear that it's Yahweh who uses the image and that the image is a clothing of light. We're also told the image is a deception and that the false prophets were the clothing of the sheep. And now in Genesis 3, we're told the image is the most devious sustenance made by the Yahweh and the shaft makes the Isha appear beautiful. Well, the word shaft is often used as a reference to a light beam. So these are all scriptural confirmations that this is truly what the image is. It's a cloak of light a disguise for the Yahweh and the Isha. Then verse 6 says in the King James translation, And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. We know the word translated as woman, number 802, is the Isha, we know the word translated as tree, number 6086, also means shaft. And the word translated as food, number 3978, also means provision. And the word provision means the providing of or supplying of something, especially of food or other necessities. So verse 6 says, and when the Isha saw that the shaft was a good provision. And then the word translated as it, number 1931, also means he or she. The word translated as wise, number 7919, means prosper or have success. 
the word translated as fruit thereof, number 6529, means reward. The word translated as eat, number 398, also means use. And the word translated as husband, number 376, also means human being or humans. So verse 6 can also say, And when the Isha saw that the shaft was a good provision, and that he or she was pleasant to the eyes, and it was a shaft to be desired to make one have success, he or she took of the reward and did use it, and gave also to the humans with him or her, and they did use it. Then verse 7 in the King James translation says, And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. So we know the word translated as eyes, number 5869, means appearance. The word translated as opened, number 6491, means blossom. And we know the word naked also means bear. So it says, And the appearance of them both blossomed, and they knew that they were bare. But the word translated as new, number 3045, also means learned to know or distinguish. So the first part of verse 7 can say, And the appearance of them both blossomed, and they learned to distinguish who was bare. So remember at the end of Genesis chapter 2 in verses 24 and 25, it said the humans will cleave to the Isha and they will become one flesh. And the humans and the Isha were both bare and were not confused. Now in Genesis 3, we're told the image, the outward appearance of the Yahweh is speaking to the Isha, telling them that the shaft in the midst of the garden will not kill them, but make them appear beautiful. And this is interesting because we were told in Genesis 2 that the Yahweh created the Isha in order to mate with the humans. So Genesis 2 verse 23 says, The flesh of this one shall be chosen. The Isha will marry the humans. And now that makes sense because it says they're now using a technology that makes them appear beautiful, a technology that the Yahweh gave them, but that was forbidden by the early creators. In Genesis 2, it says initially they were bare and were not confused. And in chapter 3, the meaning of bare becomes clear. We're told the Yahweh wear clothing of light. The image is their outward appearance. So anyone who is bare is one who is not using the image, not wearing the cloak of light that changes their appearance. So Genesis 3 tells us the Isha and the humans with them started using this cloak of light, and they also learned how to distinguish between those who were wearing the cloak and those who weren't. And this cloak of light is all throughout the Bible. It's the coat of many colors that Jacob gave to Joseph, we know colors are frequencies of light, so Joseph's coat of many colors was a coat of light. And we're told in Revelation 13 that the image is a deceiving clothing of light. And in Genesis 3, we're told the shaft is what changes the Isha's appearance, making them beautiful. So the shaft is a shaft of light. We're also told Satan transforms into an angel of light, and we know Satan is another name for the serpent, which is the image. So this clothing of light disguise is also mentioned in the first book of the prophets, the book of Isaiah. First, it talks about the daughter of Zion in Isaiah 1. It says in verses 6 through 8 that from the sole of the foot until the head, there are wounds, bruises, and sores and that the land is devoured with strangers, overrun by strangers, and the daughter of Zion is left as a besieged city, as Sodom and Gomorrah. And then it says in verses 10 and 11, Hear the word of the Lord, you rulers of Sodom, to what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me? I delight not in the blood who hath required this, your new moons and Sabbaths. It is iniquity, your new moons and your appointed feasts. My soul hates, your hands are full of blood. So this is more proof that the texts were altered because the word for Lord in verse 10 is Yahweh, as you can see here, 
And it says here that Yahweh hates the sacrificing of bullocks, lambs, or goats on the feast days. But if we look at Leviticus 23, we're told Yahweh commanded the sacrifices on the feast days. For example, in verses 18 and 19, it says, And you shall offer seven lambs, one bullock, and two rams. They shall be for a burnt offering unto the Lord, an offering made by fire for of sweet savor for unto the Lord. Then you shall offer one kid of the goats and two lambs of the first year. So you can see the word translated as Lord in these verses is in number 3068, which is Yahweh. So the answer to the question in Isaiah 112 that asks, who hath required this, is answered in Leviticus 23. It's the Yahweh that required it. It's written that Yahweh commands the sacrifice of animals, and it is also written that Yahweh hates the sacrifice of animals. So obviously, number 8 here, Jeremiah 8.8, 8, is correct again. The pen of the scribes is in falsehood. The texts were altered. Yah, either Yahweh wants them to sacrifice animals on the feast days, or Yahweh hates it. It cannot be both. So this is another example that parts of the writings were altered, which shouldn't be surprising. They're thousands of years old, but whoever wrote the text seems to have known that the text would be changed because the deeper message was written in code. And that's what we're looking at here. So in Isaiah chapter 3, we find some of the same codes that are in Genesis chapter 3. In fact, both chapters 3 in the book of the in the first book of the Bible and the first book of the prophets, Isaiah, describe the coat of light that the Isha and the Yahweh use. So Isaiah 3 continues on about the daughter of Zion. It says, I will give children to be their princes and babes shall rule over them. The child shall behave proudly against the ancient and the base against the honorable. And then in verse 12, it says, children are their oppressors and women rule over them. But we know the word translated as women, number 802, is the word isha, which the texts make clear cannot be human. So this says, and the isha shall rule over them. And that makes sense as we continue, because next it describes the cloaking technology that Genesis 3 tells us the isha hybrids are using. So it starts in verse 16. This is going to explain the cloaking technology. The King James translation says, Moreover, the Lord said, Because the daughters of Zion are haughty and walk with stretched forth necks and wanton eyes, walking and mincing as they go and making a tinkling with their feet. But the phrase daughter of Zion is a code throughout the text. It's mentioned in 31 scriptures in the Bible and in 27 of those 31 scriptures, it's translated as the daughter of Zion, singular. So there are only four scriptures in the Bible that translate the phrase as daughters of Zion, plural. And three of those four are in the book of Isaiah. However, even in Isaiah, the singular daughter of Zion is the most predominantly used, as you can see. It's in Isaiah 1, daughter of Zion, Isaiah 10, daughter of Zion again, and also in Isaiah 16, Isaiah 37, 52, and 62 all use the phrase daughter of Zion. So in Isaiah 3, 16, the word translated as daughters, number 13, 23, also means daughter singular. And the word exalted here, number 1361, is translated as haughty here, and the word haughty means arrogant. Then the word translated as walk, number 3212, means lead. The word translated as which with stretched forth, number 5186, means decline. And the word translated as next, number 1627, means throat of open sepulchre. And a sepulchre is a tomb or a grave. So it says, because the daughter of Zion is arrogant and leads the decline down the throat of an open grave. 
And then the word translated as wanton, number 8265, means seductive. The word translated as eyes, number 5869, means appearance. The word translated as walking, number 1980, means lead away. The word translated as mincing, number 2952, means take quick little steps. So it's saying leading away in quick little steps as they go. Then the word translated as making a tinkling, number 5913, means rattle. So the end of this says the rattle of the feet. So Isaiah 3 verse 16 says, Moreover, the Yahweh said, Because the daughter of Zion is arrogant and leads the decline down the throat of an open grave with seductive appearance, leading away in quick little steps as they go, the rattle of the feet. And then notice in verse 17, the word that was translated as Lord is actually word 136, which is Adonai. So the lexicon says, Adonai will cause a scab upon the head of the daughter of Zion and cause a scab upon Yahweh and they will be bare, their foreheads will be bare. And we'll find confirmation of that later. So we'll put that here. Therefore, therefore the Adonai will cause a scab upon the head of the daughter of Zion and scabs upon the Yahweh, and they will be bare. Their foreheads will be bare. And then verse 18 in the direct lex lexicon says, In that day Adonai will take away either their beauty or their glory. And then the word number 5914, which means stalks. Then word number 7636, which means front band. And it stems from an unused root, meaning to interweave. And the Hebrew word that means interwoven is a bot. And a bot also means bonds. So it says Adonai will take away the glory of their stocks and bonds. And then word number 7720 means round tires like the moon. So verse 18 says, In that day the Adonai will take away the glory of their stocks and bonds and their round tires like the moon. Then verse 19 says the pendants, and then the word 8285 is the word shara, and it says it is the same as the word shore, which means body. So the pendants of the body and the veil. So verse 19 says the pendants of the body and the veil. In verse 20, the word translated as bonnets, number 6287, also means beauty. Then the word translated as ornaments of the legs, number 6807, means marching. And it's the feminine of the word sa'ad, which means march but it also means gone. So it says their beauty will be gone. Then the word translated as headbands, number 7196, also means attire. And the word translated as tablets, number 5315, also means the breathing substance. And the next word wasn't translated, but it's there in the concordance. It's number 1004, and it means human bodies. Then the word translated as earrings, number 3908, means serpent, charming, or enchantment. So verse 20 says, Their beauty will be gone, the attire of the breathing substance of human bodies, the serpent charming enchantment. Then in verse 21, the word translated as rings, number 2885, also means signet ring. The word translated as nose, number 639, also means countenance. And the word countenance means appearance. 
So the rings and the appearance, and then the word translated as jewels, number 5141, also means ring. So verse 21 says the signet ring and the countenance ring, or the appearance ring. Then verse 22 says the changeable suits of apparel and the word translated as mantles, number 4595, also means over tunic. And that is defined as a garment or a covering membrane or tissue. And the word translated as wimples, number 4304, also means cloak. So the cloak and the crisping pins. So verse 22 says the changeable suits of apparel, the covering membrane, the cloak, and the crisping pins. Then in verse 23, the word translated as glasses, number 1549, means tablet. So the tablets and then the word translated as fine linen, number 5466, which means outer garment. So the tablets and the outer garments, the hoods and the veils. So we'll add that here. Verse 23, the tablets and the outer garments, the hoods and the veils. Then verse 24 says, And it shall come to pass that instead of sweet smell, there shall be stink. And instead of the word translated as girdle, number 2290, which also means apron or armor. So instead of an apron or armor, the word translated as rent, number 5364, which also means an encircling rope. So instead of an apron or armor, an encircling rope, and instead of well-set hair, baldness, and instead of the word translated as stomacher, number 6614, which means rich or expensive robe. So instead of an expensive robe, a girding of sackcloth, and burning instead of beauty. So verse 24 says, And it shall come to pass that instead of sweet smell, there shall be stink, and instead of an apron or armor, an encircling rope, and instead of well-set hair, baldness, and instead of an expensive robe, a girding of sackcloth, and burning instead of beauty. So it seems clear that Isaiah 3 is referring, referring to the same image technology described in Genesis 3, especially in verses 20 and 22. Their beauty will be gone, the attire of the breathing substance of human bodies, the serpent charming enchantment, the changeable suits of apparel, the covering membrane, the cloak. And verse 17 says, when these things are taken away, they will be bare. And notice it's the Adonai who will be taking this deceiving image away. So there's another reference to this in Lamentations 2. It says, The Lord covered the daughter of Zion with a cloud and cast down the beauty and slew all that were pleasant to the eye in the tabernacle of the daughter of Zion. And notice the word translated as Lord here is the word 136, which is Adonai again. So it's referring to the same thing Isaiah was referring to. It says Adonai will cast down the beauty cut off the horn of Israel, which, by the way, we know Israel refers to the whole world, cut off the horn of Israel and slay all that are pleasant to the eye in the tabernacle of the daughter of Zion. And then the word Lord in verse 6 is number 3068, which we know is Yahweh. And as you can see, the word for Lord in verse 5 is number 136, which is Adonai. So it's saying, Adonai will cast down the beauty, in other words, the image technology. And in verse 6, it says, Yahweh caused the feasts and Sabbaths to be forgotten. And verse 7, Adonai cast off his altar. He abhorred his sanctuary. In other words, it's talking about Yahweh here. Adonai cast off the altar of Yahweh. He abhorred his sanctuary. They made a noise in the house of Yahweh. Yahweh hath purpose to destroy the wall of the daughter of Zion. The prophets find no visions from Yahweh. And we'll look at this more closely later, but it says the Yahweh hath done that which they devised. So we know that Yahweh is a group, so that should be they. The Yahweh hath done that which they devised 
And then at the end of verse 17, it says, The Yahweh set up the horn, and their heart cried out to Adonai. In verse 20, Behold the Yahweh, and consider who has done this. Shall the Isha eat their fruit? So notice that word women, number 802, that's the Isha. So it says, the Ish, Shall the Isha eat their fruit? And the children of a, of a span long. In other words, should the Isha use the reward of the shaft? Because we know that word eat, that means use. And the fruit, that is the reward of the shaft. We just looked at that. It's a reference to Genesis 3. So it's saying, should the Isha use the reward of the shaft and have children for a long time? Shall the priest and the prophet be slain in the sanctuary of the Adonai? So Lamentations 2 tells us the Yahweh set up the horn, the Isha are using the shaft to produce children, and the Adonai will take away their beauty, the cloak of light, the image that they're using in order to mate with the humans to produce children. So that confirms another connection between the Isha's beauty, the cloak, and the purpose of that beauty cloak, which is to mate with the humans. So we're told in Lamentations 2 and Isaiah 3, that those who use the technology that makes them beautiful will be cast down. The technology will be taken away from them. And in Genesis 3, it tells us the ones using the image technology are the Isha and the humans with the Isha. So there are both humans and hybrids using it. But we also know the image came from Yahweh. They were the first ones using it before the Isha were created. So both Lamentations 2 and Isaiah 3 say the Adonai will take this deceiving technology away and the daughter of Zion and the Yahweh will be bare. So we left off in Genesis 3 verse 7 that says, And the appearance of them both blossomed, and they learned to distinguish who was bare. And the next part of this verse may be the most important point of all. It says, And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. But this word translated as leaves, number 5929, also means branch. So it says they sewed the fig branch together and made themselves aprons, or number 2290, which also means armor, either aprons or armor. And notice this word stems from 2296, which means to bind on. So it says they sewed the fig branch together and made themselves bound on armor. So verse 7 says, and the appearance of them both blossomed, and they learned to distinguish who was bare, and they sewed the fig branch together and made themselves bound on armor. And this bound on armor, or apron, is also referenced in Isaiah 3. It's said in verses 20 and 24 that after their beauty is gone, that attire of the breathing substance of human bodies, the serpent charming enchantment, it says, after that is gone, it shall come to pass that instead of sweet smell, there shall be stink, and instead of an apron or armor, an encircling robe. So this is confirmation again that the putting on of the apron armor is actually the putting on of the image, the cloak of light, the attire of the breathing substance of human bodies, the serpent charming enchantment, the changeable suits of apparel, the covering membrane, the coat, coat of many colors, or the cloak. And Isaiah verse 21 indicates the countenance ring has some connection to all of this. And the word countenance literally means appearance. So it's saying in verse 21, the appearance ring has some connection to the attire of the breathing substance of human bodies. So we know the text tell us the image technology is made of light, and light is electromagnetic radiation within a certain portion of the electromagnetic spectrum. Specifically, visible light is the portion of the electromagnetic spectrum that human eyes detect. So the Bible tells us the cloak is made of light. Light is electromagnetic radiation, 
and an electromagnetic field looks similar to a ring. Even the magnetic field around the earth is shaped like a ring. So the appearance ring in Isaiah 3 may refer to an electromagnetic field. The human body also produces magnetic fields. The first valid measurement of a magnetic field produced by a human body was done in 1963. But the book of Revelation says, starting in number six here, it says the image deceives by the means of the mark. So it says the lamb who speaks like a dragon was given the mark to make the outward appearance of the beast. And that mark, it says in number 11 here, is also put on the right hand or the forehead, and they buy or sell with it. So we know they're already doing that with the RFID chip. And we know they also have microchip tattoos that they're that they're doing the same thing with. So at this point, it it does look like the microchip itself is the mark. So that means because it says here, that the mark is the is the is the means is is how they are able to create the outward appearance. That means that the cloak of light, the outward appearance is made with the help of microchips. In other words, it's microtechnology. And this is a concept that can be conceived of in modern times. It's depicted in modern television and movies regularly. It's sometimes called shape shifting. And it has been in the Bible for thousands of years, only it was covered up until now. So finally, the reference to the fig tree in Genesis 3-7 is possibly the most important point. It's another code about the timing of this event. So Jesus said in Matthew 24, 32, Now learn a parable of the fig tree when his branch is yet tender and puts forth leaves. You know that summer is nigh. So he was telling us that the fig tree is a parable or riddle. In other words, it's code. In Hosea 9, we're told the first ripe in the fig tree are the fathers of Israel. And Israel became a recognized world nation in 1947. That's common knowledge. Many have recognized that the emergence of Israel may be what Jesus referred to when he mentioned the, the branch of the fig tree putting forth leaves. If that's true, and Jesus was referring to 1947, when he said the branch of the fig tree will put forth leaves at that time, then the sewing together of the fig tree branch in Genesis 3 may also refer to 1947. Genesis 3 tells us the fig tree branch was sewn together by the Isha, the hybrids, and the humans with them, and that occurred in Eden, which we know is near Mesopotamia and modern-day Iraq. So we know they were created, the, the Isha was created in that time. But here, it's, it's referencing 1947 when it says they sewed together the fig tree branch when they started using the shaft. Genesis 2 tells us the Isha were hybrids created by the Yahweh in order to marry the humans. And it also tells us the marriage between the humans and the Isha represents the bones of the feet. So in Daniel, the feet are the final part of the image when the little horn rises, we found out in a previous examination that Israel is the little horn, and it rose up in 1947. In Genesis 6, we're told the sons of God marry humans when humans begin to multiply on the earth. Well, the human population growth went exponential between 1920 and 1960, so that's another connection to that time period. Also, the sons of God are the Nephilim, and the word Nephilim means fall out. In Genesis 12, we're told the dragon is cast to the earth after the war in the sky, which seems to refer to World War II, which ended in 1945. So now we have another confirmation of the timing in Isaiah 3, verse 16, the decline into the grave by the seductive appearance, that's the image technology, 
it says here that is the rattling of the feet and that connects back to Daniel's timeline in Genesis 2. The marriage in Genesis 2 verse 23 between the humans and the Isha was the bones of the feet and the decline into the grave by the seductive appearance in Isaiah 3 is the rattling of the feet. So Daniel told us exactly when the feet of the image occur. It's at the tail end of the fourth empire, and it will be destroyed by an asteroid impact. It's the time when we saw the fig tree branch sprout forth leaves, which is what Genesis 3 verse 7 confirms. The appearance of them both blossomed when they sewed the fig branch together. Also notice Lamentations 2 mentions the foot stool in verse 1. It says, Adonai covered the daughter of Zion with a cloud and cast down the beauty and remembered not the foot stool in the day of his anger. So we'll add that here. It says the foot stool is the beauty The rattling of the feet is the decline into the grave by seductive appearance, and the bones of the feet represent the marriage between the humans and the Isha. So we have multiple scriptural confirmations that the deception by the cloak of light disguise and the marrying between humans and hybrids is happening in modern times. So that's it for this week. If you want more information, the whole series playlist, Bible's Countdown to the Asteroid, is linked here. And there are several other videos linked in the description below. Just click on Show More to open up more links on this subject. The transcript, as I said before, is also available at indigoflower.net. So if you like this video, please consider providing support. I cannot do this without your help. These presentations are funded by viewers like you. So thank you to everyone who has made this research possible. I hope you're doing well, and I'll talk to you next week.